Welcome to Alphabet City. This is the show where we cover everything related to Alphabet Inc. What's Alphabet, you ask? What's that you didn't ask? Because you already know that Alphabet owns lots of other companies, most notably Google. Clever audience, well done. This is a packed episode. Today's top stories include a snazzy new Chromebook and new info on Waymo's early rider program. But first, we get to talk about a real all-screen Android phone. I'm your guide, Aya Zaktar. Let's head on over to Android Avenue. Vivo introduced the world to not your average phone with the Nex. The Nex is pretty much the same as the Vivo Apex concept phone, but the Nex is coming to market. There's a tiny, tiny chin at the very bottom of the Nex. It's got a huge 6.59 inch Super AMOLED screen. The downside is it's only 1080p resolution. Under that big old screen is a fingerprint sensor. Inside is a Snapdragon 845 processor, same as some Galaxy S9 phones, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage. And let's talk about that front facing camera. It rises from the Nex, just like the Apex. The Nex is launching in China. Other markets have not been confirmed. Time to visit the Chrome Dome. Samsung has a brand new Chromebook called the Chromebook Plus V2. 500 bucks get you a notebook with a screen that can flip all the way around. Now, why would you want to do that? Because you're a maniac or you just want to use your Chromebook as a tablet. The Plus V2 can run Android apps, by the way. One neat touch is the 13 megapixel camera on the keyboard base. When you have the V2 in tablet mode, you can take pictures like you would on a regular tablet. Sure, it still looks ridiculous to use a tablet as a camera, but it is what it is. The Chromebook Plus V2 has a couple of USB-C ports and a micro SD card slot for expandability. It also houses a pen so you can mark up the screen. In a genius move, Samsung included a single USB-A port on the same side as the pen. No, I'm not being sarcastic for once. No need for a dongle to attach very common items. The Samsung Chromebook Plus V2 arrives on June 24th. Expect a full review at some site called CNET.com by a Josh I'm not made out of gold man. Next up, Windows Way. Wait a minute, we're doing Windows stuff now on the show? Don't ask me, you wrote it. Oh, I did write it. At CES Asia, Huawei showed off its Huawei Cloud PC service. Notebook Italia got some video of the feature in action. It gives Huawei phones the ability to access a virtual Windows 10 PC. When the Huawei phone is in a dock, you can have a more traditional desktop experience. The virtual Windows PC can access the phone's local storage too. We're not done with Windows. There have been murmurs of the Google Pixelbook being able to support an operating system other than Chrome OS. Pointed out by the good people at XDA developers, new evidence found in the Pixelbook's firmware make reference to the Windows Hardware Certification Kit and the Windows Hardware Lab Kit. Part of Microsoft's hardware compatibility program is the Hardware Lab Kit. So does this mean that we'll see Windows on a Pixelbook? I asked Google, a representative told me, as a hardware organization, we don't comment on rumors or speculation. Well, that cleared up nothing. It's time to visit the Waymo Garage. Waymo published a blog post looking at its early rider program after one year. Waymo was once known as Google's self-driving car project. It is now its own company owned by Alphabet. In Arizona, Waymo is running a test that began way back in April 2017. People signed up to be early riders and they would be driven around in a self-driving car. So Waymo published a blog post with an infographic explaining how the test is going. I could let you read it in silence, but I never, ever, 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 ever shut up. On the first day, Waymo received around 6,000 applicants to be early riders. To date, over 20,000 people have applied. 400 riders use the service daily around the Phoenix area. Waymo also ranked the top 10 places early riders went to. Do we have a top 10 guy or a top 5 guy or something around here? Let's go to them. These are the top 10 most popular trips taken by early riders. Number 10 is the gym. Number 9 is the electronics store. Number 8, the supermarket. Number 7, health salon or spa. Number 6, a retail store. Number 5, a car repair shop. Number 4, the bar. Number 3, school. Number 2 is a restaurant. And the number 1 most popular trip taken by early riders is to work. Back to you, Alphabet Boy. Hmm, yes, thanks, countdown guy. Anyway, Waymo says it is still taking applications. So if you want to be driven around by Waymo's minivans, now is your chance. Last stop, comment code. This is the part of the show where we shine a light on comments made by the best audience in the world, minus that one guy. You know who you are. Hero from the 90s asks, will the Pixel come to T-Mobile? Well, T-Mobile will not sell Pixels in its stores, but you can buy an unlocked Pixel from Google and bring it to whatever carrier you want in the US. About the Pixel 3's design, Illuminary Zara says, their ad campaign, it's a phone. 
Arvind Medina said that Pixel with the Snapdragon 710 will be an Android One phone. I don't see Google tainting the Pixel branding with mid-range hardware. That's a really great point. The Pixel brand is Google's premium line, so you could be right. Maybe a lower end phone would carry a different name. That does it for us. If you've enjoyed your stay in Alphabet City, please remember to like and subscribe. Tap that bell icon if you want notifications when we add new episodes. I'm Aya Zaktar, and I'll see you online. Okay, you're still here. Awesome. A rumor popped up recently saying the Note 9 would have a physical shutter button based on a leaked phone case. It turns out that button was just a spot for a lanyard to be attached to the case. The Note 9 is expected to be introduced on August 9th, but that is still not yet official. Oh, and YouTube Music and YouTube Premium are available now. Bye.